let's fly the Lemby arrival. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is a video I made of a spectacular arrival procedure called the Lemby 6 arrival and the approach to JFK Airport in New York City. In this video, I'll explain how it's possible to capture such amazing views from the air. I'm strategically sitting on the left side of the plane approaching the New York City area from the west. There are several airports in the area and my destination is JFK. Because the airports are so close to each other, arrivals to each airport are assigned different altitudes and with JFK being one of the airports that's further east than the others like Newark and LaGuardia, we need to maintain a high altitude while approaching the city of New York and then we'll descend while over the city. This arrival procedure is one of three major arrival routes to JFK and the one that provides the steepest descents but the best views. The Air Traffic Control Center has given us clearance to descend to 19,000 feet over Elmwood Park, New Jersey under a navigational location in the sky called Lendy. This is only about 15 miles northwest of Manhattan and yes, we are really high here but we have to stay high because the airspace below is being used for flights into and out of other airports like Newark and LaGuardia. For example, departures from LaGuardia climb quickly and over the city and we can't get in their way so we have to stay high. Approaching Lendy. We're headed towards New York City, and after we pass over Elmwood Park, or Lendy, air traffic controllers that are located at an approach control facility in Garden City, New York, will tell us which way to turn and when to descend to get to the runway at JFK. Today, we'll be landing on runway 22 left, and we'll need to make a giant left turn around JFK to get to the runway. We can now see the Hudson River and Westchester County come into view from this position in New Jersey. The visibility is great today for what's a fantastic day to fly to New York City. We noticed that the density of the buildings on the other side of the Hudson River are increasing and we're starting to see the Bronx, the northernmost borough of New York City. On the other side is Long Island Sound. In the vicinity of Lendy, we're told by air traffic control to turn to a southeastern heading which will point us towards the Atlantic Ocean. We are in luck because this heading allows us to get amazing views of Manhattan today as we fly over eastern New Jersey. We're being told by the approach controller to descend to 13,000 feet. 13,000 feet is still high being so close to our destination airport, but flights departing LaGuardia heading towards the south, the general direction that we're going now, are allowed to climb to 12,000 feet, so we need that separation. New York has a very complicated airspace. You can see LaGuardia Airport just past Manhattan. LaGuardia is in Queens, which is the same borough that JFK is in. We'll be able to see JFK soon. Here you can clearly see the shape of Manhattan. If you want a closer view, check out my video of an approach to LaGuardia where my flight flies northbound on the Hudson River at a low altitude below the departing flights from LaGuardia. There are many levels of airspace here, and again, that's why we're still so high. I love flying this route to JFK. I'll take a moment to zoom in from this altitude and I'll focus on Midtown Manhattan. How many buildings do you recognize? Famous New York City landmarks like the Empire State Building, the Chrysler Building, and the United Nations can be seen here, as well as the brand new super tall skyscrapers that have been constructed in recent years. As we continue, we fly directly over downtown Manhattan and have a great view of the East River with the borough of Brooklyn on the other side. We're moving through New York City very quickly. We're also becoming clear of some of the other airspace restrictions for flights in the area, and the approach controller is clearing us down to lower altitudes. We can now see our final destination, Kennedy Airport. Yes, we are still way too high to land, and because we need to land on runway 22 left today due to the wind, we're going to have to go past the airport, circle around it in a left turn, then come back and land. We can't make this approach from the other direction by means of a right turn because of the airport's runway configuration today and LaGuardia's airspace, so we'll head out over the Atlantic Ocean where we can descend more and start turning left. Yep, New York's airspace is complex. We've got a great view of Brooklyn from up here, and the airport on the right is Floyd Bennett Field. You can see runways there, however, it's only used by the NYPD as a base for their aviation unit's helicopters. Amazing views today. The body of water between Floyd Bennett Field and JFK is Jamaica Bay. We're starting a left turn to a new heading to fit into the traffic pattern, but we'll still head out over the ocean. As the left wing dips lower, we clearly see Sheepshead Bay and the Brighton Beach neighborhood of Brooklyn. 
Directly below us is Coney Island. There are a lot of neighborhoods in New York City, and we went from Manhattan to the Atlantic Ocean really fast. As I pan the camera back, we can see Manhattan behind us. From here over the ocean, we can follow the Hudson River north of New York City and see the Bronx and Long Island Sound. As I move the camera back to the right, you can get a sense of how Long Island got its name. At over 100 miles long, it's the 11th largest island in the United States. Both Brooklyn and Queens are on this island and will be on the ground in Queens later in this video. I definitely got lucky with the good visibility today. You can see so much from up here. I hope you're enjoying these views. I invite you to support my channel by hitting that subscribe button below. My goal is to provide you with detailed content like this and a lot more. Our anticipated landing runway will be 2 2 left. As we continue over the ocean and look back at JFK, you can see the runway we'll be landing on, but we'll land in the opposite direction from the view you see here. We're being told by the approach controller to descend even lower as we clear the path of departing flights from JFK. We're moving further away from the airport as the air traffic controller tells us to adjust our speed and heading to fit us between arrivals coming from the south along the New Jersey coast and arrivals coming from the east over Long Island. Remember, this flight came from the west and we just flew that steep approach to JFK over the city, but arrivals from other directions have a more direct path. No matter what direction the flight is coming from, the approach controller's goal in this airspace is to bring every arrival towards the final approach course to runway 22 left. We're looking at the beaches of Long Island's south shore, and just below us we see a field of container ships. These ships have just completed long journeys across the sea and are waiting to be cleared into New York Harbor to unload their goods. It's always nice to get this viewpoint from the air. There's a lot going on in the airspace up here and a lot going on in the water below us. After all, this is the New York metropolitan area. I am glad we're at a lower altitude now so we can see these ships well. It's not very often you get to see this view. We're maintaining an easterly heading paralleling the Nassau County communities of Atlantic Beach, Long Beach, and Lido Beach, New York, while descending. Soon, air traffic control will provide us with instructions to turn back to the north. The turn just depends on how busy the airspace is. We're going to head out just a little bit further. The timing of the turn is aligned with the location of arrivals from the south and east who need to fly to the same exact airspace to prepare for a landing on runway 22 left. Okay, we're in that turn now. While we turned toward the north, we were offered a great view of one of the cargo ships. It's really impressive to see these massive vessels from above. We'll soon fly over land once again, and we're on a heading of around 40 degrees. This is called the downwind leg. Our heading is parallel with the runway we're going to land on, but in the opposite direction of landing. Now joining the downwind leg. We're finally at an altitude where we can see more details on the ground. We're going to pass directly over Jones Beach State Park, a very popular place for locals to visit during the summertime and less than 20 miles from Manhattan. Our next turn to the left aligns us with the other arrivals. JFK is known for its flow of wide-body aircraft, and because larger airplanes produce more turbulence, adequate separation between arrivals is essential. As we fly over the beach, we remain clear of low-altitude aircraft that like to fly along the shoreline, sightseeing or towing a banner. Much of the south shore of Long Island is guarded by barrier islands, forming many bays with small islands and channels which are popular with boaters. The body of water that we're flying over now is called South Oyster Bay. It's not to be confused with Oyster Bay, which is located on the north shore of Long Island. There are a bunch of bays on the south shore here, and all are formed by the very long barrier island that we just flew over. We're now over a densely populated area of Nassau County near Wonton, New York, and the remainder of the flight will be primarily over residential areas. We've been asked by the air traffic controller to slow down. I've got the airport in sight. It's tough to see because of the position of the sun, but I can see JFK Airport to the left. The circular building is the Nassau Coliseum, we're also flying by the location where our current air traffic controller is located at the Terminal Radar Approach Control Facility, or TRACON. We've been talking to this facility ever since we were over New Jersey. The controller can't see us out the window, but uses radar to see our location, speed, and altitude. This controller has cleared us to 3,000 feet and has asked us to turn to a heading of west-southwest to intercept and join an instrument landing system signal directly to runway 22 left. 
We're now cleared to make the final approach to JFK, and after all of this time, the approach controller tells us to leave his frequency and call the air traffic control tower at JFK for landing clearance. The controller we're about to speak to is located on the top floor of the control tower at Terminal 4 at JFK. When the pilot switches the radio frequency to the tower, the controller assesses the air traffic situation and informs us that since traffic is light, we are cleared to land on runway 22 left. We can continue the approach and since it's a nice day, the controller can see us out the window, unlike the controller at the approach control facility that we just flew over in Garden City. In the cockpit, the flight crew is making final preparations to land. They're adjusting the flap settings and extending the landing gear. It's straight on in from this point on. The runway is directly in front of us. Our landing runway, runway 22 left, is parallel to runway 22 right, which is off to the right side. It has a compass heading of around 220 degrees, which is where the 22 comes from. We'll be on it soon. The approach to runway 22 left roughly follows the border between Queens and Nassau County, so the majority of what we're looking at on this side is Nassau County, and the majority of the view on the other side of the airplane is Queens. We're also roughly over the Belt Parkway, which heads towards runway 22 left before it turns to the west near JFK. On the horizon, you can even still see part of the Atlantic Ocean. We were just out there a few minutes ago. This runway is also known for its offset approach, which is commonly used. The offset approach is offset about 10 degrees to the east, and adjustments would need to be made on the final approach course to line up with the runway, but today, we're just going straight in. As we continue on, the controller and the control tower is always monitoring us by looking out the window and on the radar. Traffic-wise, we are in a perfect situation. The aircraft in front of us has landed and is very well clear of the runway, and the winds are very light today, making for a smooth approach. We are at a low altitude over the Rosedale section of Queens. Residents of this neighborhood often see traffic arriving from all over the world on various airlines. We are at a point where the pilot needs to decide if we should land or perform a missed approach. With everything perfect today, we're going to continue on to the runway. As the residential area comes to an end, we fly over a small wetland. The water here comes from Jamaica Bay, which we saw when we were at a higher altitude. And seconds before touchdown, we fly over Rockaway Boulevard and Thurston Basin. It's time to land on runway 22 left. This runway is 8,400 feet long, making it the shortest runway at JFK, but it's commonly used for all aircraft types from the A380 to turboprops. Runway 22 left is only used for landing, while its neighbor, runway 22 right, is used for both arrivals and departures. For this flight today, we did not use the entire runway, and we were able to vacate the runway on a taxiway that leads straight towards our terminal, which will be Terminal 4. Welcome to JFK. Please like to thank each of you for wearing your mask or face covering. Cover your nose and mouth throughout the flight. And that's it. We're on the ground at JFK. I hope you gained a good appreciation on what it takes to get a plane to this airport from the West. It is one of the most complex descent procedures in the United States because of the busy airspace and you can see how much impact the other airports have on JFK. If the other airports did not exist, we would have been on the ground much sooner, but there are no other options for us but to stay high over the city and make a circling descent after that because of the other airports in the area. All right, well, I'm in the terminal now at JFK. I really hope you enjoyed that video. That was an absolutely spectacular approach. Let me know in the comments section below if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thanks everybody for watching. Be on the lookout for some more great videos from me. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and click on that bell button so that you're alerted as to every time I post something new for you. Take care.